Greetings friends, my name's Cooley and I'd like to demonstrate how you can easily and cheaply create parabolic reflective cookers and free us from oil dependence. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make a reusable mold from which you can make these parabolic reflector cookers. In order to make the cooker itself, see my other video, do it yourself, solar cooker ferro cement. I envision these molds could be made in villages worldwide and supporting the local manufacturer of these reflective dishes. This would reduce the oil consumption in developed countries and it would reduce deforestation in the less developed countries. The principle is very simple. We create a shaping tool with the parabolic curve and then establish two reference points a pivot in the center and a flat surface around the outside. When we rotate this shaper around on this surface, we form out a paraboloid shape. And so we just fill this, we just fill this in with rubble, rough material, and then finish it off with fine materials. I choose to use cement-based products to create a heavy-duty model that could be used in the experiments here in the Sustainability Technology Program at Lost Valley Education Center. Lost Valley Education Center is an aspiring eco-village which teaches permaculture south of uh, Eugene, Oregon. So, experiment using your own local materials and have fun. Generally speaking, the amount of solar energy that falls on one square meter of surface is roughly a thousand watts and it's a hundred percent free. I chose to use a parabolic shape for my form because this shape concentrates the warm sunlight to a focal point, creating a hot spot warm enough to cook food and even set dry tinder aflame. My two meter diameter parabola created a total collection area of roughly three square meters with a focal point 70 centimeters out from the center of the dish or vertex. The details from my parabolic curve calculations and numerous other details regarding this project can be found on my website. To make the shaper, I started by drawing on paper one half of my parabolic curve, including the horizontal axis and the vertex or pivot point. I then transferred the parabolic curve to my sheet of shaper material, keeping the horizontal reference line for the parabola parallel with the straight edge of my shaper material. Then I cut out the shaper with a jigsaw and sanded out any rough spots. At the parabola vertex of the shaper curve, I mounted the pivot pin. That will later fit snugly into the pivot pipe. And on the wider end of the shaper curve, I mounted a foot to support the shaper that will later be moved around on the circular flat base. The circular flat base is the first of two reference points needed to create our parabolic mold. The circular flat base supports the shaper foot as the shaper is rotated around the central pivot pipe. To begin the actual construction, I cleared a level space with plenty of room to rotate the shaper in a full circle around the central pivot point. After clearing away the organic material, I built a square form lining up the corners with cross strings to assure a flat and level surface. Flat and level is very important. I reduced my concrete needs by forming in the corners and installing a circular inner form just inside the rotational path of the shaper's foot. I mixed bags of concrete and poured it into the forms, smoothed it off with a straight board atop a level outer forms and troweled it off for a smooth finish. The central pivot pipe is the second of the two reference points needed to create our parabolic mold. I used half inch pipe for my pivot, driving it into the ground to the center of the circular flat base area. To set the straight edge of our shaper to ride level around the circle, I placed the foot end of the shaper on the level flat base and held the pivot pin end of the shaper next to the pivot pipe in the middle. With the top edge of the shaper level, I marked and then cut the extra pivot pipe. So now we have our shaper. 
level flat base, and our central pivot point, time to fill it in. In order to build up the mold material, I filled in most all of the space under the rotated shaper with large rocks and rubble, then progressively smaller rocks with some concrete here and there to tie it all together. Refining the process as we get closer to the finished surface, we fill in most of the last inch or so with concrete, leaving about a quarter of an inch of space to finish with sand mix. In order to secure a one inch plastic perimeter pipe in the finished mold, I made a groove around the base of the concrete by securing a piece of one inch wooden dowel near the outer end of the shaper. Later, this plastic perimeter pipe will be used to tie down reinforcing mesh when making our dishes. I finished the top coat with a mix of one part Portland cement with three parts of fine sand, carefully moving the shaper to define the final outer surface with a few touch-ups here and there with a trowel. Over each of the next few days, I sanded any bumps off the still soft surface with a patch of metal window screen and painted on thick coats of straight Portland cement to fill any pits and gaps. It's very important to cure cement products adequately. Cement sets strong as it reacts with water, not by drying out. Keep it wet for at least three full days. Keep the ferro cement wet and covered with a plastic sheet. After sufficient curing, I drew a design and stained the surface. I finished it off with a commercial concrete sealer. I installed the plastic pipe along the perimeter groove. And then I installed some screws with the screw heads exposed a little and secured a wire around the base, wrapping it tightly on each screw head. This perimeter wire will serve to secure reinforcing mesh when we use the mold to make a dish. If you need additional information about this mold construction and how to use it to make parabolic dishes, go to my website.